Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Coach Parker and this is another edition of the Block Party Academy. Uh, a series designed for the players at Fair State University and the guys that are playing in my offensive line room. Going through each week a new topic and really diving into playing offensive line. And as you can see, I've got a new setup today thanks to the software OBS. I'm kind of getting a feel for it, I have a couple different looks. Um, like I said, as this progresses, the better I'll get at this. It was my major in college, but I wasn't very good at it for what it's worth. Um, but all that being said, I'm excited for this one today because this is the last of our fundamentals. So alignment, split, stance, assignment, step, strike, ass, ass. This is the final piece of that fundamental. So I'm, I'm kind of excited to put a bow on it and, and really, you know, have seven episodes um, that a player can use and get to and really feel comfortable of, uh, you know, playing offensive line at Ferris State. Uh, like I said, my name is Sam Parker. I coach the offensive line. I'm the run game coordinator at Ferris State University. You can follow me on Twitter at Coach Parker. Um, on Instagram at Coach Sam Parker and on YouTube with the Block Party Academy, which you're currently doing. So I appreciate that. Um, like I said, this series, you know, every every episode is designed for the guys in my room. I wanted to make a teaching manual and I, I'm very dedicated to this. So they have something to learn at all points in the year, at any time, wherever they're at and have access to my uh, drainy voice. So, um, you know, not everything, especially in this episode, not everything you're going to be agreeing with, which is okay, you know. Um, but I definitely think that there's a lot of good material here and uh, uh, definitely a lot of good stuff. So I'm really excited to get into this one, to be honest with you. And, you know, with the new setup here, too, it's going to be a lot of fun going through it. So let's get into it. Um, the three elements of the strike, okay? It, it's pretty simple in terms of blocking. There's the impact, the fit, and the finish. The fit is the grappling element. Um, it is the ability to control another person's body and, you know, that is the in-between the impact and the finish. So impact is the initial contact, the initial point, the collision, the car crash. The fit is the in-between, you know, the car crash and us putting hips on the defender, which I classify as the finish. If you were able to put hips on a defender, you were able to um, put them down to the ground. And you can even see in the judo clip here, of the hip toss, hips are on the defender and his feet are off the ground. So uh, most coaches here finish or players and they think go through the whistle. Well, this is a concrete thing, whether the whistle happens or not, of what you're aiming to get to. And we'll see that in some clips coming up here um, when we get into some film moving along. Okay, so let's get into the impact, the car crash. So this is the point of contact. This is the collision, like I said, and it involves three contact points more times than not. Okay, so when we talked about impact, if you were a, a you know, in MMA, you could have impact with your knees or your legs. Very rarely does that happen in football. More times than not, it's a penalty. So the three contact points are your head, shoulders, and hands. So that is a triangle of contact. Um, that is what we're trying to do. So if you see here in the, the slide contact here, hands, helmet, and shoulder pads, and you can also see here, helmet and shoulder pads are off, so the hands are connecting. Usually the hands are the ones that make the most contact. If you think about it, there's always distance um, between, the, you know, pass pro and other spots in the game and uh, the helmet and the shoulder pads usually are the ones that leave the most devastating blows. Okay, so 
let's break down a little bit of how to train for effective impacts, okay? Um, and we're going to get to later on in this. I have all the Indian training right in a row, but I want to put it into you right now and what to focus on. Okay, when we're talking about effective impacts, impacts should be a violent collision that creates, um, you know, movement or sets the tone in terms of setting your own ground. So what to focus on is hips, number one, explosive movements, number two, generating power through the triangle of contact, number four, weight room, and five, hand-eye coordination and hand speed. Two, three, four, and yes, one are all the same thing to me. It's just how many different ways do you got to say it? You got to be dedicated in the weight room, working the lower half of your body and your hips in order to have great impacts. The better the impact is, the better the block will be on the highlight reel. Um, I think when, you, when we go through this process, alignment, split, and stance, we can have guys that fit that and are perfect with that. And they always know where to go. And their steps are perfect, but when they get to that point of impact, we're looking for impactful highlight reel blocks. And you don't get to that if you aren't explosive, if you're not twitchy and uh, and strong, okay? So favorite training exercises, we'll get into this later on. Plyometric jumps, sled punches, med ball throws against the wall. Power clean, hang clean, front squat, goblet squat, hex bar deadlift, and kettlebell swing. So you're basically looking at a front-loaded squat, uh, a hinge lift, um, jumps, sled punches, and med ball throws. I think the sled punches and the med ball throws are the most underrated. Um, and I think it's mainly because of the hand-eye coordination and also the ability to trust your own body weight making an impact um, and making it a, co a collision on something. Okay, so now let's watch a little bit of tape here, okay? And this first one um, that we want to look at here is all about a heavy collision, okay? So this is the impact that we're talking about. Watch the pull here from the left guard. I'm gonna let that play one more time through, okay? Really look at what happens here. So left guard, this is who he's targeting. And notice the impact, okay? And we'll talk about finish in a little bit, but sometimes the finish and the impact uh, go hand in hand, you know? So as he's making this impact, and you can see hands, shoulder pad, and helmet, that triangle of contact, and I know it's touchy not to say helmet, but that's what happens when you play offensive line, and look at the devastating blow that this delivers, okay? So that's what happens when you have a, a tremendous collision and can end something right away, okay? Now... Let's look at an impact that's going to be a little bit more from the right guard here, okay? So the right guard, and we're running inside zone. So he's going to be carrying on his way here. Touches, gets to the second level defender. So as soon as he gets to this point, that's the impact. That's what we're talking about right now, okay? He makes the impact on the defender. Feet continue to run, and now he turns it a fit and drive, and eventually you can see the finish from the right guard all the way here, okay? Also take note of the finish from the right tackle as he slides off on this one as the dude gets away, and boom, to that point. You know, so this is what we're talking about in terms of the full structure of it. Okay, one more time. That's the impact, the collision, the fit to the finish. So that's the full scope of what we're looking at um, when it comes to uh, this, the, the, the strike. Okay, um, as we progress, we're going to talk about the, the 
the book ends here, okay? So you have the, the impact. That's the initial point of contact. That's where we make our blow delivery. Then you have what? More times than not, and I would say 99 times out of 100 blocks do not end on the impact. They normally end when the whistle blows. So more times than not, the majority of your block is the fit. And as coaches, I think we spend a lot, way too much time on it. And it can be the majority of everything that we do indie wise, but it is important. You know, I'm not going to discredit or say that isn't, but, uh, you know, the, the whole element of it is you got to be put in perfect position for a perfect fit. Um, you know, if you're not in good position and you're trying to get to a fit, and so it's known as a holding, okay, or a missed block, a whiff. So we want to set everything up perfectly and not perfectly, to the best that we can, so that our fit represents that as well, okay? So a fit is how we control the defender. It's creating movement and it's utilizing leverage. I want to highlight this guy right here because his fit and you can see his base and everything that we've talked about already in terms of stance, body position and everything. But look at his fit, clamped down with the, the paws, locked up on both sides of the defender. Okay, great job of elbows being tight to this point. And you can see the contact points, okay, all the way back was shoulder, helmet and hands for the impact, and then you can see the fit that he has. And, there, and, and the, most importantly about the fit, when we talk about leverage, okay? Leverage to me is low knees, getting underneath his knees, and being able to put your body between you and the ball carrier, period. Like that's leverage. If you're able to get underneath the guy with the majority of your weight and maintain control, that's what's going to create the most um, movement. And the other thing, too, I want to say about the fit and why it's so critical and important. If two guys weigh the exact same, okay, as soon as the impact is made, or like if one dude's a little bit faster, maybe the other guy's a little bit stronger, somebody's going to move a step one way or another. But when it's the same weight, after that momentum has stopped, it, you're going to, it's going to be a stalemate standing there. So what is the difference maker? And that would be the fit. So what creates movement? It is lowering the knees. It is the grip on the defender. It is the leg drive and the balance, period. Uh, a wide base is great, but we see guys that get movement with a narrow base. Um, you know, low pad level, shoulder pad level is great, but we see guys um, at other times, you know, get movement by having, you know, high shoulder pads, but their knees are lower, okay? Um, you see a lot of those things. So break down what you see is most consistent, which for me, low knees, grip, leg drive, and balance, okay? So run game fit elements, what we want to do is we want to make that impact with the triangle, shoulder pads, helmet, hands, right? And then we want to get our elbows on the defender so we can bury our face in there, okay? If I have control of somebody, just like how I am now, um, nice tight fit, elbows on top, pulling him into me, my biceps are flexed, like you have complete control over him, okay? And you you... Combine that with leg drive and then a finish, which we'll talk about that, which is essentially, if you picture the Statue of Liberty, um, that's what's going to happen. Pass game fit is a little bit different because we want to keep our helmet and shoulder pads out of it, so we're using our hands but and then extend the elbows. Once I get to this point in my fit, in my strike, in my jam here, okay, then what normally happens is turn this, right? Turn that or get to this fit and then to that point. And so what we want to do is make the collision and the impact with our hands, extend the elbows to, to stop the momentum and set the tone. And then we're going to arch our back, 
you know, like a palm tree, if there's any sort of continuous movement. Um, and then we're going to continue through our run game progression. Okay, so here is a good look at some fits. All right. As we'll go through them. Take a look at the left tackle, all right, in terms of his fit as, as we break this down. All right. So the left tackle here is to, we're zoning out, all right. He makes the contact with his hands, his helmet, and his shoulder pads soon to follow on this collision. All right. And now look, guys. His elbows get on the defender, and I mean, we're not going to be so critical that they have to be on your chest and this sort of thing, but as soon as he feels that the stalemate's going, look at him extend into that Statue of Liberty that we're talking about to create that next level movement in the leg drive, and look at the push that he has. Now, let's also look at this side here between the center and left guard, okay, on this double team. So you can see this collision, right? Both offensive players have elbows on and can extend through. The one thing that is really good here is the low knees out of the left guard. Look at his knees getting underneath the defender and able to bully through a finish here. We see a lot of finishes on this, to be honest with you. It finishes any time we get our hips on the defender, okay? We're getting one here from our right guard. We're getting one from our right tackle, as well as, you know, bodies right there. So we have three guys that have finished dudes on the play. And then you're getting some insane athleticism here by our very talented left guard. Gosh, you can't, I mean, you can't coach that. It's just raw athleticism. So now let's see a pass pro. Um, you know, we're talking about uh, out of pass pro in terms of using our hands and a little bit different. So look at the left tackle, okay? Making the collision with his hands. As soon as he's got one hand extended, all right, he's waiting for the momentum and the movement to stop. As soon as it does, you can tell he's trying to turn this into a run game and a run style fit where he's making this go forward, okay? So look, stop and now trying to create that momentum. More importantly, what I want to show here is a heavy impact that I think is outstanding from the left guard. He recognizes there's nothing coming to him, so he turns to absolutely deplete on his kill shot. So this is one of the times that we're talking about of an impact finishing at the same time. And it's a tremendous job. And look at both of them. I mean, the, I hate to say this, guys, but I don't think there's anything more fair estate than a knockdown and a pass protection and then both guys jumping on top to finish the play. This is a great, great clip and representation of what we're about here. Okay. And now let's talk about the finish, which is the last element of this. So if the, um, if the strike is the beginning, the spark, the lighter, the fit is the in-between, you know, the connective tissue. This is the bow on top, okay? And so when we talk about finish, you know, the one thing I, I think that we want to look like is the Statue of Liberty. And you can see Trent Williams here, okay? And we all know what happens at the end of this play. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this dude's going backwards. He is Statue of Liberty through this dude here. Like an absolute rocket going off through him but you can't extend immediately. Like you, you have to know when to extend and that is when you control and maintain a good fit. You can do this. Um, sometimes if you align that momentum, you can cut that distance out where you don't need a fit and you can go into an impact and a finish immediately. But the thing that I want you to think about is this, okay? Is picture the body being a rubber band. 
all right? And if we did this right now, you know, it, th this is somebody's shoulders, here's their knees, so leg and feet back here, hips, and you know, and their body, their, their, their hip hinge all that way. So we want to be in this position when we're in the fit, when we make the contact, all of that, okay? This is our body controlled. Once we control them, our hips snap forward like a rubber band. And if you look at the judo guys here, this is exactly what we're talking about, a complete um, snap and a complete energy spike uh, that is going through these guys, okay? And that snap is what we want to simulate with our hips, like a rubber band at any point that we're making contact and need to get desired movement into the finish. So if we can get this, which is the back of our hips, onto the defender with a snap, a lot of great things happen. And a lot of the time it turns into knockdowns. Um, one of the things also to uh, kind of think about and consider here as we work to the finish is you know, picturing like what we're trying to accomplish here, which is elongating, you know, and snapping directly through somebody like a rocket going off or, you know, an inflatable, uh, you know, something that is, is just sparking out. I think of like jousting, like going forward. That's where we want to finish, right? They bring it down and then boom, through there. Um, the same thing goes with the shot put. You know, that position is what we're trying to get to at that point. And the easiest way to think about the amount of force and energy that can come down is picture, you know, like a tree going down on this house. It's, it's as sturdy as a house is, and as light as a tree looks. Um, when that thing falls and elongates, it is devastating. Okay, absolutely devastating. So... Um, a couple, three components for the finish that we want to get to is put hips on the defender and extend body with the snap of the hip. Extending the elbows creates force going through the defender and the force and power throws the defender off balance. Okay, so much like all three of those analogies, that's what's going to happen uh, against the guy that you're going against. All right, so here's another great look at um, exactly what we're talking about here, okay, in terms of that huge finish and that huge impact. We're going to be watching the right guard on this play. So watch the pull as he comes through, the trap, the collision, and then notice the finish here, okay. As the guy is going down to the ground, he's going to elongate his body and put his hips on the defender, okay? That is the most complete block you can get. If you are able to make a collision, the impact, the fit is really two or three steps and then a great finish on top of them. You know, and, and yes, a finish is diving on the defender. Like, of, of course it is, you know? All of those create great finishes and what usually leads to great plays. You know, it's a touchdown here and because of a tremendous block at that point of attack. All right, and now seeing, you know, working to that finish. So here we're going to watch, I believe, right guard here, okay? So look at the right guard on this one. So we look at it right here. He has something in his gap immediately, which is also before, really, we want to take two steps down, if you remember right. And he's getting contact on the first one. But the thing that he does a good job of is look at the fit, okay? So the impact is less than desirable. It's really before I even get my first step down. And the impact is, the, he is the one doing the impact to me, right? But, like I said, he gets to that point where he gets his fit, helmet buried in the defender, elbows on, all right, 
and now is turning and look at the Statue of Liberty he's doing to this guy and turning and running him, all right? And yeah, it's it turns into a, well, he, you know, he doesn't get hips on the defender, but because he gets to this position and creates that movement on the stalemate, he, you know, gets him wide of it, okay? And then you can see, too, our right tackle, who is not, a, you know, particularly strong guy, but take a look at how good his fit is throughout this entire play. And even towards the end where 54 is spinning out, he is still almost maintaining control and not falling on his face like our boy here. I mean, it's really, really good work. Okay, so now let's talk about the training of this and getting into the training of um, the, these components and elements, okay? So training the finish is about mentality, not just necessarily drills and exercises. So when we say finish, we're saying hands, you know, put hips on the defender. We're always asking for one more. We're always pushing the limits because that's when it's going to come into play. You can, you know, work these drills to death, but without the right mentality for it, and having a purposeful finish, just rather than yelling finish, 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 like finish, hips are on the defender, or hips are across the line, or whatever it may be. These are specific points that we have to this, okay? So, here's a couple of drills. Number one, and I think the easiest one, is just your standard box jump, okay? And standard jump. Big fella here taking off the ground and landing on one foot. I think all one foot jumps, lifts, whatever, are way better than two feet, obviously, because you're on the field, you're doing this more. Um, helping strengthening the, the, the knee, the ligaments, the tiny muscles, all of that stuff getting to this. I think this is a really good thing, and it's easy to do. Everybody in America can be doing this, and I, and I know this sounds crazy to just be highlighting a jump, but I think this is some of the most important stuff you can do. And to alter this is turn you know, each way that you're going side to side, obviously creating, uh, you know, adding bag to make it higher or a plate to increase the level, um, but that burst and that plyometric and that uh, you know, all jumps. And I'm talking, you know, not just vertical or box or whatever, but also forward bounding, all of that. That's what's going to create an explosive, powerful jolt in there, okay? The second thing is a front loaded squat. So here we have a front squat. Uh, he has a shoulder issue, which is why he's not um, in a hand clean grip, which I would always prefer for wrist flexibility, the more flexible your wrists are, the easier your hands can stay open, unflexible wrists, something like this, and oh, I guess I'll get to this point, less surface area. So here you can guard your chest more, here no good, okay? Um, so why a front loaded squat versus a back squat because it simulates what you do on the field and it doesn't need to be just necessarily a front squat but it can also be um you know a goblet squat uh, dumbbells goblet squat kettlebell squat whatever it is as long as the weight is centered in front of you it's also going to help your you know lats control that and it's just one of the most realistic things that you can do in a weight room uh to simulate on the field and here is, you know, and then we talk about hinge lifts, okay? So this would be any kettlebell, any, uh, you know, power clean, hang clean, um, any sort of violent movement. And here it's a hex bar deadlift. And I particularly love this, and this is probably my favorite exercise for guys in the weight room because, as you remember, it mimics our stance and our jump stance so much. It's also an incredibly safe lift, um, as it forces your good, you know, good back posture, nice loaded down, uh, really takes the stress off the back because it's your center, you know, you're, you're working in a halo. The bar is in front of you or behind you and you're over shifting one side. It's a very even lift 
And if you struggle at it, you just drop the weight. So it's incredibly safe. Um, but this is what I love about this in terms of that violent hip explosion. So look as he comes up to this point, look at the hip snap, all right? Look at how he is, you know, it, 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 I mean, this is a really good job. I mean, the whole, his body posture the entire time, never a rounded back, focused on the hip snapping forward. And guess what? This guy too is one of our most violent offensive linemen when it comes to the fits and uh, creating a lot of good movement. So now I want to get into deep dive. Uh, my favorite, which is the med ball slam against the wall, the tosses. And to me, without a doubt, if there's one thing that we can do here today, this is the number one drill, exercise, or anything that I think you need to incorporate in your program immediately, okay? And it is that, okay? The violence between controlling the ball, the amount of reps that you can get, the ability to, to create, you know, just this twitch and energy going through there, I think is tremendous, okay? So what we got here is, you know, with the other lifts, I, you know, I'm not a strength and conditioning coach, but what I can tell you here is what we're trying to get out of it, right? We want that ball close to our chest, and when we launch, and we want our hips to be the thing that propels it, not our hands, okay? Uh, you know, he can do a better job of trying to lift this under and lower that ball here, but this is still, I mean, I would take this all day all day of just that snap, you know. He comes up on his toes a little bit, and you, you can tell he's losing a little bit of power beforehand on that one. But the previous ones, you know, the first one, he's on his toes the whole time. But he's, he's really, you know, the thing that I love is he's really bringing that power and keeping his elbows bent on this one. Um, but, I, I mean, this is the total hip explosion that you're looking for and in getting into that fit. Now, is this realistic on the field to this point? Well, what we want to picture is him in that fit right now, okay? And now he's bringing his hands and we're focusing on him creating, you know, whether he's stopping a, a bull rush or whatever it may be, um, but creating that hip snap. Now, this is one where we're really focusing more on the run game and really focusing on the extension of the finish, okay? And really making sure that our guys feel comfortable fully elongating the body to this point, okay? And again, you can hit this as hard as you want. You can do this as many times a day. And I, I do think that there's no limit to how many times you should be able to do this, okay? The next one here, in a different variation, the other thing I want to say about this too is uh, different variations of this is put the ball on one side or another to have like a turn to this point. The other thing is you can be in a lunge to get to this point. You can be sideways and turn to it. There's a lot of great things just adjusting your body position if you picture, you know, crosshairs here to those landmarks. Um, but this one, it, you know, I got this from a golf swing, but, it, you know, plan. But the thing I love about this is this, this position, okay? It's very rare to get this out of any drill work or anything like that, but how many times an athlete gets to this on the field is pretty ridiculous. And I'm not just talking about wide receivers, defensive backs, obviously offensive linemen, because you're constant, you know, you are constantly – turning and twisting and dipping and moving. And so this is maintaining your balance as well as creating power with it. So to this point, you know, this rep here is simulating that, you know, that reach block or maybe that release that we're looking for, or to that point of really having to maneuver somebody and finish in an awkward position. Again, getting tons of reps safely. And the big thing we want to do here, okay, is we want to swing this ball, and I'd like him to be, 
like just relax with those arms straight out. It's tough. I mean, it's it's not natural. I'm sure Brooks Kapka can do it pretty well. I can't. But see how he's lifting up underneath this and his, his chest opens up to face the wall? That's exactly what we want. That's the movement you want. And it really is good for strengthening your back and your rotational movements. And a good one to complement it is versus us lifting up. We're going to get in a lunge position, and then we're going to straighten our arm out to this point. Now, this one is just training us to have good balance and deal with an awkward position and rotationally getting to this, okay? So, again, another awkward finish. So, if you picture that power going through there, all right, and us trying to maneuver or whatever, this knee is going to open up and that whole force is going to roll through. Uh, so it's really balancing and controlling the power and dictating when we can utilize it on the field versus the other way around. Now, the last one, and it's the one that most people do, but, um, you know, that I absolutely love is the sled punches. OK, and it's as simple as this. Pressing, locking out. Pressing, locking out. And I think, I mean, I watch Bama's guys do it all the time. I watch a lot of great NFL players, and it's it's as simple as that. And we'll spice it up, all right, and I encourage it. So after we get a couple without taking steps, we'll add in steps. So one, two, land, and then we get into that, all right. Get both guys, you know, have a healthy competition with it. But again, the fits with the impact, right? So impact with the head, hands, elbows get to the defender, and we elongate. It's very simple, right? It's not something that I really, that most people even teach because it happens so naturally. As soon as the elbows get on the bag, the elbows get extended to the finish. Okay, and then, you know, after we get those two steps down square, we'll turn and, and work some other zone steps. And I love having the bags that you have to press in to get going up because it just shows you when guys are trying to, not necessarily cheat, but when they need to unlock their hips here. All right. And it's pretty good, too, you know, getting steps in and getting a full, you know, a full... Uh, rep of the block, you know, as we break this down, we're getting our alignment or split. We're getting our stance, which is, which is a two point step one, two. Okay. And our assignment, we're running zone. And then here comes the strike. Boom. Really a tremendous job. The last thing I want to highlight here is our fit to finish progression, which this is our bullhorn where we're working our body posture, getting our hips on the defender and rolling our, our, our leg drive through, in which we then take that into our fit, okay, and rolling our leg drive through. And that's all we're working on is you can see all, you know, everybody is launching their hips forward and just maintaining their elbows. The only thing that we're looking for is hips rolling forward and a little bit of a snap. And then you know, piecing it together a little bit, creating the space of so the, you know, the first one, no hands. The next one, hands. The, the, the third one, we remove the hands, two steps, and then driving through. So if at any point our guys stink at this or it's no good, we're going to bring it back or we're going to do it in slow motion, slow the drill down or, you know, cap it for the day. If we are able to get it, then we're going to incorporate into some assignments, okay? Some run game here out of our two-point stance, getting square into the defender and driving vertical. And the last one, working it, you know, where we have our, our step open and driving, trying to get to the near number on it, okay? So, um, you know, that's going to do it for me. Uh, on the strike, I, I, I probably will get back into this in terms of the, the different kinds of strikes. I'd even touch on, you know, the uppercut, the double under, the jam. I'd kind of break that into hand placement later on. But I, I think in terms of strike in general, this is pretty good. Um, if you have any questions, email me. Find me on Twitter. 
reach out in some capacity. There ain't a ton of people that watch these, so of course I've got time for you. Um, the other thing too is if you're interested in these, if you want to download them, go to coachparker.selfi.store and these are all free. I have a couple of other items for a couple of bucks, um, but you know, for me, you, you don't want to hear my voice and you just want the clips, feel free to download it um, visiting the link. And uh, for players here that have stuck through this in the first seven series, I can tell you this much. If you can master this and really just have it memorized and instill these, you know, the six principles, the six um, key pieces of our fundamentals, then you're going to have a very, very, very successful career playing for me. Um, the guys that don't or aren't interested in this or care less or think that this is boring will typically not be successful playing football for me. Um, I like guys that are obsessed with offensive line play. I love guys that play Madden, that watch Monday Night Football, that have favorite teams, um, that geek out looking at, you know, old school clips on Twitter, that pull up things off uh, Instagram to show me, that have new ideas. Like, I love football. I love talking about football. So, you know, for, for my guys, if you're able to do this, it's such a good indicator of your success. And that goes for anybody, especially if I'm not your coach or whatever, and you find this interesting, hats off to you. You're doing something right. So that concludes the fundamentals. Um, and so starting next week, we're going to be talking about a little bit of the unique things that we do at Fair State and that will last, you know, probably a month's worth. And before, you know, we get to the season, I want to be able to go through every scheme that we have um, to cap it off. So appreciate you guys sticking through. I hope you like the, you know, the new setup here. Um, it's pretty cool. Uh, get better at it as we go, right? So that does it for me. This is Coach Parker. This is another episode of the Block Party Academy. Thanks, and we will see you next week. Or we won't.